Hi, I'm Franz Snydman. Welcome to Revolution Fitness Studio. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Franz, hey, for inviting me. Of course. How are you? I am so grateful to you and Joanna for inviting me here because I have like the worst technique in kettlebells and I really want to learn. I'm pumped up. I am cool. so inspired by you guys. You're so, so professional in this. And I want to know how you have evolution or revolutioned into kettlebells because I interviewed you in Caracas, Venezuela when you were starting out with the balls, the right. stability balls, and you were like the pioneers in that. And now what happened? You're so focused right now on kettlebells. Yeah, we certainly weren't the pioneers in it, but uh, we was definitely a huge focus of our training. Uh, that was in, I think that was in the year 2000, so almost 11 years ago. <laughs> so a lot has changed. Yes. Um, it was in 2002 uh, I got introduced to kettlebells uh, by a friend and actually my twin brother. And they said, you have to try these things. They're really bizarre, but they're incredible. They make you more athletic. Uh, this looks like a cannonball with a handle on it. Show it. And, uh, you <laughs> For know, those of it's, you who don't know. Yeah, this is a kettlebell. It basically is, it's, Whoa. I got it. How heavy is this? This one is, uh, <laughs> this is 20 kilos. So it's about uh, 44, 44 pounds. pounds. Yeah, so in Russia, everything is kilos and in Venezuela everything is in kilos as well. Right, right. So, but uh, I, I got in them in 2002 and uh, I actually was able to train with the, with the guy, the top guy, his name is Pavel, and uh, Pavel Sasuling, he's from Latvia, he's Russian, and he started a certification. And a client of mine and I, we had hired him and we went up to Santa Monica in 02, hired him for two hours, and after that two hours I was humbled and I realized that I didn't move as well as I thought I did. And I really liked the way that this made my body feel. So it was from that point, I said, I'm changing the direction of my training. This, these are going to be huge. It's not a fad. These are going to be around forever. They've been around since, as far as we know, maybe the 16th century. Uh, and they work. So I completely changed my approach. And since 2002, that's been our top focus. Not that we don't use other tools, we do. But our, our main tool is the kettlebell. Yeah, and uh, I'm surprised because you are now certified by RKC. Yes. You guys are like the master trainers, and in San Diego, California, where we are right now, you guys are the number one leaders, and I understand that you're only the only ones who are able to certify people. Like, if I want to get certified, I, it'd be by you guys. Uh, we're part of the teaching staff for a company called Dragon Door, which is the parent company that puts on what's called the Russian Kettlebell Challenge, which is the top, it's the top kettlebell certification on the planet. And it's a three-day certification. I want to take it's it. It's something you have to earn. It's not easy to get. Uh, there's both uh, coaching skill and physical skill to be able to actually go through the three days and pass it and earn your certification. So we're 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 part of that. We're not you know we're we're definitely not like the top people, but we're part of the teaching staff. Oh, you're so humble. You're so humble. <laughs> uh, Joanna told me that you guys were the only ones who could certify people right here in San Diego. Well, no, we're and the that's only... a big thing. We're in La Jolla. We're right? part of the process. We're part of the process. Okay, forget it. <laughs> I'm going to read what's on your booklet later on, or I'm going to write it on this video so that you guys get an idea of these guys. They have videos. Uh, John is now making Kettlebell Mommy. Yes. Um, I saw your blog. It's awesome. I'm going to read it Thank and you. study it and be working out with all your uh, videos that I'm also going to buy. Anyway, so tell me more about kettlebells. What is it that makes them special? What is the difference between dumbbells? I understand that the center of gravity has changed. Tell right. me more about that. Yeah. And what kind of swings can you do and which ones you can't? Yeah, well, a, a inherent in the actual structure of the kettlebell, uh, it has an offset handle. If you think of a dumbbell, a dumbbell is perfectly balanced. You know, you've got the two ends and then you've got the centerpiece. So the center of gravity in a dumbbell is right in the center. The center of gravity in a kettlebell is down here. So it lends itself to more of a swinging motion. It's very difficult to swing a heavy dumbbell in between your legs. One is the dumbbells get bigger, you just kind of run out of room in between your <laughs> knees. And it just feels very awkward. Um, I don't usually recommend it. I mean, it's better than nothing, but there's no comparison. The kettlebell is designed for swinging. So that's, I would say that's the first thing, is that the, just, just the actual unique shape and structure of it is what makes it different. There isn't really anything else there uh, like it. Two, it's, it's a gym in your pocket. It is literally something that you can do, you can replace all of the machines at a gym, pulling, rows, leg exercises, squatting, lunging, pressing, twisting exercises, and then all the Olympic lifting type of movements, like you know, cleans, power cleans, snatches with barbells, all that can be done 
and is actually done really, really well with a kettlebell. So it actually, it streamlines your training because it, it allows you to get the benefits of movement, of three-dimensional movement, but you don't have to have a thousand different pieces of machinery or equipment. So it, it, it really simplifies life. Yeah, um, I like that. It does, it does. <laughs> Yeah. No. So, Jim in Your Pocket is a perfect kettlebell, and uh, I'd like to know about the weights, because I bought these, that are, uh, they're really light for me, and they don't work. So, tell me, what is the initial weight? Should it be like 15 pounds to start You know, for, um, for, a, for a woman... For instance, somebody like me, I'm a beginner in this. Yeah, but, you're, but you have an athletic background, yeah. something. The challenge with starting too light, if you have like a 5 pound kettlebell, mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. usually your brain is not going to take it seriously. <laughs> and if it's too light, you'll, you'll end up doing more of an arm exercise, which is what most, most beginners do. They end up using more of like a, almost like a deltoid raise. Right. That's not what a kettlebell is for. So you have to have at least a, a minimal amount of weight to, uh, I would say, kind of excite your brain saying, okay, this is serious. I better include my glutes and my hamstrings and my legs. So if the weight's not heavy enough, you don't really use your legs enough. If it's too heavy, then that's not good either. So for most women, I would say they can start off with a, what's called an eight kilo. And an eight kilo is about 18 pounds. 15 pounds is okay, but most women can safely start off with about an 18 pound kettlebell. Okay. And then a more athletic, uh, stronger woman would do maybe what's called a 12 kilo, which is a 26 pounds. So between 18 pounds and 26 pounds is a very good starting weight for women. For men, I would say up a little bit. So men, I would say, between 35 pounds and 53 pounds, depending on their size yeah. and their sporting history and their strength that they currently have. So that's 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 more or less kind of like the that like the norms good. that we uh, that we recommend. Okay, it's good to know because okay, you can't take regular fitness into account for kettlebells. I think it really changes the paradigm. It's like a paradigm it shift. It does. It's for me, time. it has been. Yeah. It's like it's okay, the techniques that work with dumbbells do not work with kettlebells. It's something completely different. It is totally functional, and we're going to see that in the workouts. I'm going to learn, and I would like you to show me in the exercises yeah. how you can actually work everything. I mean, I'm talking about what you said. If it really substitutes the gym, then it must work legs, hamstrings, every, it does. Uh, it does. Calves, no, 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 no. Totally everything, it does. back, chest, uh, shoulders, But it does it in a, in a different fashion. Core. I think the, mm -hmm. the majority of people that are kind of coming out of maybe like the 80s and 90s, mm -hmm with more of like an isolation type of mentality mm -hmm. where like your, your workout was back and biceps or maybe triceps yeah, one day. Yeah, that's typical in it's, it's, it's that, that, that we know is not the way the body functions. And it's just, it's, it's just not, it's not, uh, it's not as appropriate and it's not as effective as doing full body exercises. So when I say full body, I mean exercises or movements that would encourage the harmonious activation of every muscle in your body. So the way to train is to train full body movements, which yes. you and I are going to go over, like, like the swing. There's exactly. an exercise called a Turkish get up, which is a phenomenal full body exercise. So it, 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 it allows you to get much more bang for your buck per se, because yes. you don't have to do a million different exercises. You can do five or six movements. And if you, you just stuck with those six movements, yes. you easily have a year of training of practicing, of trying to get these movements good. So the focus with kettlebells is not on individual muscles. It's on movement. That's how it should be. And that's, and that's why you use kettlebells. Right. To move better, to learn how to move better. And in that process, mm -hmm. you build muscle, you lose fat, you look better, you get that athletic, hard body that uh, is pretty typical of kettlebell training. It doesn't make you big and bulky. It's not that type of workout. No. But, it, but it makes you dense. And it... More importantly, I think uh, it makes you move better, it makes you feel better. Excellent. I want yeah. you asked for it from yeah. the kettlebell. And it's interesting because I see you're certified by ACE, I am too. And um, ACE published a report that is amazing. It uh -huh. really tells people, hey, you know what, this is better than weights and cardio. This actually substitutes the, you know, it's always been like cardio on one side, resistance training on the other. Right. Tell me, how does it? Combine. I mean, if it's well, obviously ACE is an authority on fitness, and they're telling us, hey, you don't need to do weights and cardio, you can do just kettlebells. And kettlebells will substitute everything. Isn't that fantastic? You know, there, there, there's obviously benefit to doing just kind of like your classical like weight training with barbells and dumbbells. I think the benefit of kettlebells, and maybe some of the things that this ACE article talked about, is that you can, you can get 
uh, the benefits of strength training and the benefits of cardio at the same time. So again, for people that are time poor and that don't have the time to do an hour of yoga and an hour of spinning and then an hour of weights, it allows you to get mobility, strength, and like super monster cardio workouts all at the same time. So from a time management standpoint, that makes more sense. But you really just, you have to, it, you best learn kettlebells by the actual application of you doing it. And uh, your heart rate gets, it, it gets high. So you can definitely, you know, from, a, from an endurance standpoint and a stamina standpoint, it, it, in the RKC world, we call it the what the hell effect. <laughs> and we don't really know exactly all the reasons why it works, but doing things like swings and get-ups and some of the movements that we teach, it builds such a level of fitness that we have had, uh, we've had many trainers that have gone through the certification that, for example, have wanted to run a marathon. And they never trained for a marathon, ever. And all they did was kettlebells, but they built up the stamina and the, what I call like the reserve capacity of energy to be able to do it. That's like the what the hell effect. It's like, who knows? Like, it builds a baseline level of stamina and work capacity where you can just, you can do so much more. So there is, I think we're going to find out more and more scientifically why that works, but it does work. It does work. It does work. Yeah. Okay, so before we get to the training, because I know I'm really excited and anxious to just get going with the kettlebell since so many benefits are proven already and more to be proved. Okay, so tell me, what are the tips? And at the end, I'd yeah. like to do, give your contact information sure. so that we can all access to your, your guys' videos, trainings, blogs, mm -hmm. everything else. So uh, let's start with the tips. What are the main tips that I have to, to take into consideration and account? If I'm training kettlebells. Well, I mean, really that the importance of, uh, I would say, of focusing on movement, which we talked about, is that the goal of kettlebells, similar to, to almost like a martial art practice or like a yoga practice, somebody is a yoga person and they love, you know, and, and they have a daily practice, to really, the first tip would be to treat this in a very focused and almost kind of like a yogic type of way, where you would focus on the practice of kettlebells. So it's not so much you're going to the gym to get a workout, you're going to the gym to improve, to actually learn. So rather than going to, you know, I'm going to go sweat, that's not the goal. That's a byproduct of your practice. So the, I would say that the first tip would be to focus on movement, which is about internal. It's, it's an internal process of learning about how your body moves, where your limitations are, maybe where you don't have a lot of awareness of what you're not doing or what you should be doing. So movement and that internal focus. So it's, 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 it's definitely more of an internal job. That sounds kind of weird and esoteric, but that's really what it is. <laughs> Kettlebells is a practice. That's the first tip. Treat it like a practice. It takes focus. It takes, uh, you know, it takes time. And that's not to say that somebody couldn't get better quickly, but to get really good at kettlebells, you need to treat it with the focus and attention that you would with any kind of discipline. So it is a discipline. It's an internal art that just happens to get you in kick butt shape and look really, <laughs> really good. Um, my second tip would be that uh, kettlebells are based on postures and they're based on, cert on certain positions. So trying to get people away from like the muscle idea, like, well, I want to work my butt or my hamstring or my abs, which is not necessarily wrong, but the body doesn't think in, in, that, in those terms. So to really learn kettlebells, it's very dependent on your ability to get into certain postures. Once you can maintain those postures and the certain positions, you'll get the kettlebells. You will get the movements. The muscles will happen. I mean, they will fire the way they need to once you have mastered those postures and the certain positions. So that would be the second tip, is that you really need to focus on the postures and the positions that we're going to go over, which are very athletic. And they're very, uh, and I'd say they have a lot of carryover to any sport. So it doesn't really matter what sport you want to do, or even if you're just a housewife or a grandmother or a grandfather, this will help you. It'll definitely help you. So th those would be the first two, tips, two tips, tips that I would, I would try to encourage people to kind of embrace. That's fantastic. Are those tips. Any other ones? Besides the ones you're going to give me while I train, while I work out with you, while I, while I practice. Yeah, exactly, I exactly. Uh, I, you know, I, I, again, this probably can really, it's just kind of a, a carryover of the first two. But the third tip would be to just focus on quality. 
that most people have the mentality of more is better. More is not better. Uh, it's, it's really, you know, better technique and better form is better. So in that sense, I would say if you focus on quality, you don't need to do as much because the work that you're doing, let's say you're doing swings or you're doing some squats or you're doing some presses with the kettlebells. If you focus on the quality and you try not to get, just focus on the volume. Like, you know what, I'm going to get this many reps and I don't care what it takes, I'm going to get there. I'm going to do it. That's, that's not how you should approach this. Focus on moving well, on breathing properly, on owning these certain postures and positions, and you'll actually discover that you get much better, much better results because it's mindful. It's mindful movement. So you'll be wow, I'm doing less like actual work. I'm doing less time. Like I'm not having to do these hours of work because the quality of what you're doing is so effective that the results are just that much more uh, fast. So that would be my third tip, is that to really focus on quality and be patient. You know, this is a process. You will get it, but it, you know, you can't, you can't rush any of the process. Like, you can't go from a one to a 10. You have to go from a one to a two to a three and embrace that ramp. Everybody's learning ramps a little bit different. That's okay. You need to respect that and just, you know, just, but above all, focus on the quality. Be, you know, have good reps. Don't, don't do junk reps. And your results will be better. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> so where can people find you guys? Uh, probably the best ways to find us on our website, uh, revolutionlahoya.com. Uh, it's L-A-J-O-L-L-A, -L 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 like yeah, La Jola. Sure and uh, from there it has, uh, you, can, you can friend us on Facebook. You can sign up for our Twitter accounts and receive our tweets. And um, we also have our blogs on there as well. So if you go to that a website, that pretty much has all of the information. It has our products. We have various uh, products and DVDs, a work line DVDs where you're actually able to do the kettlebell movements with us in the actual training sessions. Uh, and Joanna, like we talked about, is coming up with a guide to pregnancy, how to use kettlebells safely during your pregnancy for mothers, which is just an amazing product. And we got some other stuff coming, which I won't talk about, but uh, <laughs> that, I think that should be enough for now. Excellent. Yeah. So, so, thank you so much. You're friends. welcome. Okay, and I'm ready to train. Are you ready to learn? I am. Thank you. Let's go.